In this example, we're looking at convective heat transfer with conduction across multiple layers. So a furnace is constructed of a 130 millimeter steel layer and an outer surface of bricks, which is 170 millimeters thick. The thermal conductivities of the steel and brick layers are 144 and 4.38 watts per meter Kelvin respectively, whilst we're going to take heat transfer of the inner and outer surface of 18, point, sorry, 18 watts per meter squared Kelvin and 73 watts per meter squared Kelvin for the convections. Given that the temperature of the furnace is kept at 650 and outside is 45 degrees Celsius, calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient, which will be U. So the question is, what is U? So quickly drawing this, what we say we have is a furnace. So on the inside, it is at a 650 degrees Celsius temperature. There is brick. So there we have the layers of brick. We are given a K value. So K is equal to, in this instance, 144. So sorry, that's a little bit small. On the outside, we then have a steel layer, which is 130 millimeters. It was 170 millimeters on the left here. K for the steel was given as 4.38. We had convection both on the inside and on the outside where the convection H on the inside, just have a look at that, was 18 and on the outside H was equal to 73. So I'm not writing the units in here but they are in the question. So as we said, the question said U is equal to what? So the way that we're going to do all of these types of equations is we're going to say that Q is equal to something for layer 1 for layer 2, 3, and 4. So this depends on whether we are doing convection or conduction. So if we have conduction, that will be layer 1. We are going to have H A delta T. For convection, sorry, the other way around, for convection, we have H A delta T. For conduction, it's minus K A dT dx. And we solve these for all of the equations. And then once we've got that, we then rearrange them and we figure out how many unknowns are there and how many knowns are there. What we said in a previous calculation or a previous note was that if we have certain assumptions, we can simplify this. So what were these assumptions? The first one was if this is at steady state. In the examples I've done so far, everything's in steady state. K1, which doesn't really matter here, is not equal to K2 was a constant, it's not a function of temperature, and the area was also constant. So we don't have some function of x versus area or something like that. If we had that, the equations that I had above, we could skip a step and say that Q is equal to delta T on R. Or if you look in the notes, and I'll put a link to this in the video, we said that Q divided by A is equal to delta T divided by, and then we take in, we've already taken out the A, so you can see we've got the A taken out here, but this gets simplified to 1 on HI plus L1 on K1 plus L2 on K2 plus 1 on H of the outside. So from this, what can we solve? We can solve the Q on A. So these are unknowns in this question here. So I'll ask you to pause the video and check my maths here, but if I take all the numbers that we had from the equation and I calculate what Q over A is, you should get a value of 5552 watts per meter Kelvin. So that is solving for Q over A. It's not what the question asked though, they asked for what is U. So U is the overall heat transfer coefficient. And we had another equation with Q where we said Q is equal to U A T inside minus T outside, where we now have the U in this equation. We can rearrange this so that U is on the left hand side. So U is equal to Q divided by A multiplied by that delta T term. And again, if you plug those numbers in, the U value for this question should come out as 9.18 watts per meters squared Kelvin, and that is our final answer.